Welcome back. Um, in the last video, we saw that any subset W of V will inherit the axioms 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, and 10 from V, so we don't have to prove them when we try to prove that something's a subspace. Um, we will, in this video, prove this theorem, theorem 1.2.1. I'm going to prove that if W is a subset of a vector space V, then W is a subspace of V if and only if the following conditions hold. So instead of having to prove all 10 axioms, we'll have three properties to prove, and that will be much shorter to do. All right, first one, the zero element of V, which I'll denote by zero with a V subscript whenever their confusion, there might be confusion, um, the zero V uh, needs to be in W. Second, for any two element W1 and W2 in W, the sum will also be inside W. And then for any K in R and any W in W, I need to get a new element kw, which is still in the subset w. All right, so these are the three properties. Let me call them that. That are true for subspaces and that need to be true for something to be a subspace. All right, so instead of having to prove all 10 axioms, we just have to prove these three properties much faster, much easier, much clearer. All right, so let's prove this, but this statement is um, an if and only if. It's an if and only if, so that says that the first part, W is a subspace of V, is equivalent for these to these three properties being equal. To prove something like this, which we'll denote as P double arrow Q, to prove such a statement, we, uh, sorry, statement, we need to prove two statements the two directions. We need to prove that P implies Q. So if P then Q. So if we prove this, we'll assume P and prove Q. We ha also have to prove that the other direction works. And so we have to assume Q and prove P. So if Q, then P. So we assume Q and prove P. All right, so let's start with one direction. Let's prove this direction. So I'm going to assume the first statement. I'm going to assume that W is a subspace. So I know all 10 axioms are true for W. And I will prove these three. That won't be too hard. So I'm going to assume that a W is a subspace of V. And I want to prove the three properties. All right. First, I need to prove that the zero element of V is in W. All right, so I have one element in W that I know for sure because it's a subspace. I have zero W, that's an element of W. But remember that W is a subset of V, so it's also an element of V. If I multiply that element by zero, the zero real number. Well, I have a theorem that tells me what I get. Let me look. Theorem 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. Uh, Where was it? Ah, here it is. So in theorem 1.1.1, 1. 1. 1. 1, we prove that if we multiply any vector by zero, we get the zero of the vector space. So now we have something cute going on here. Um, we have two different vector space. So let's look at this in W. 
So if I consider this in W, I will get the zero of W. So theorem 1.1.1. But if I look at it, because these are also this is also an element um, of V, if I look at it in V, I'm going to get zero of V again by theorem 1.1.1. So I'm using the theorem on two different vector space on V and on W. But these two are clearly equal. And so zero V is the same as zero W and it has to be in W. All right, so the subspace will have the same zero as the general vector space, as the big vector space. All right, that proves the first one. Second one is axiom one. Third one is axiom six. So two follows from axiom one, which was closure of the addition, and three follows from axiom six, which was closure of the scalar multiplication. All right, so this direction was easy because this is clearly easier to prove than the 10 axioms. So we'll do more work in the next direction. So now we have to prove that Q implies P. So in this case, we're going to assume the three properties. And we need to prove that W is a subspace. So we need to prove the 10 axioms. All right, so let's go in order. Axiom one is pretty much two. It's exactly two, in fact. So that follows from two. In fact, pretty much what we're saying is that's one of the axioms you have to prove. Now, we've already mentioned this. Axioms two and three, those are about how nice the addition is. That follows from V being a vector space. We're using the same operation. And so if it was nice for V, it's going to be nice on W. That's a smaller set. All right, axiom four, we need to prove that what we have, those three properties, is enough to get a zero, where I'm going to take the zero of W to be the zero of V. All right, it's in W by one. So I'm assuming zero of V is in W from the first property here. And so that's what I'm going to use now. And then because... Um, V is a vector space. Zero V plus V is equal to V plus zero V is equal to V for all V in V. But W is smaller, and so for any W in W, which is contained in V, 0 V plus W equals W plus 0 V equals W. So for V being a vector, for V to be, in order to, for V to be a vector space, you needed that property to be true for the elements of W as well because they're part of V. Axiom 5. Notice that we don't have anything about the inverse in these three property, but we have k times w, and we've seen that minus 1 times w will be the inverse, so that's what we'll take. All right, so I'm going to take minus w to be equal to minus 1 times w, which is in w by property 3. Then w plus minus w equals 1w plus minus 1w. That's going to be 1 plus minus 1 
w, w0, w, w0. All zero V, which is zero W. Done. All right, axiom six. Well, axiom six was about closure of multiplication. That's what we assume in property three. So done. And then axioms 7, 8, 9, and 10 um, follow from V being a vector space. And we're done. All right, so this was a bit strange. It was a bit of abstract work. But what's nice now is in all that follows to prove that something is a vector space, all we'll have to do is to prove these three properties. We will not have to consider all 10 axioms. And that's going to save us so much time that it was worth going through this proof and checking that those three were indeed enough. All right, in the following videos, I will be looking at examples and proving their vector spaces or subspaces of a vector space using these three properties or proving that they're not using these three properties. All right, so I'll see you then.